Thank you, everyone, for being here. I'm Joseph Warren. I'm Prince and Barbara's youngest child, and I was often over the years recognized as my father's younger brother, including six times today. <laughs> Our father was from an era. Our father was from an era when men were made of steel and ships were made of wood. <laughs> it wasn't always will be a United States Marine, and he lived a core model, Semper Fidelis, always faithful in everything he did. Born into a family of 14 in 1933, he lived through the Great Depression including helping his family on the farm, delivering newspapers, and helping the neighbors cultivate bakery gardens to make ends meet. Utilizing his depression skills, he lived the maxim that one man's trash is another man's treasure by gluing all manner of things back together to extend their useful lives. One such item of note was a mirror dinghy sailboat they first acquired in 1970, sold in 1973, repurchased when he returned from Indonesia and Hawaii 15 years later, and finally bequeathed to my brother George. Many a family member, friend, and scout learned the sail of that boat, and by the end, the rigging, battens, and ropes were all held together by epoxy glue and bailing wire. As World War II swept the world, Fritz and his younger brother Jerry decided it would be prudent to revert to their given Christian names of George and Jerome. In 1950, our father forged his parents' signature to enlist in the Marine Corps so he could fight the Korean War. Luckily, they discovered that he had played the trumpet at St. Paul's High School in Jacksonville, Florida. They gave him orders to Bugler School at Beaufort, South Carolina. He served on the USS Missouri, which is now a museum in Pearl Harbor, attaining the rank of sergeant. The military decoration he's most proud of is his Good Conduct Medal, which is only available to enlisted Marines. While aboard the USS Missouri, a young Lieutenant GJG and a United States Naval Academy graduate took an interest in our dad and encouraged him to take the Naval Academy prep school exam. He passed and went on to graduate and be the class president of the class of 1957. Our dad continued to serve as the president of his Naptis class for many of the last 60 years. We're very grateful that his classmate, Captain Harry Gilbert, would be able to be with us today. Our father was always faithful to his fellow Marines, and he played an instrumental role in the organization and funding of the 2nd Battalion, 4th Marine, Magnificent Bastards Association. He served as the escort operations officer for 2 4 in the Republic of Vietnam from 1967 to 1968, including the decisive and bloody battle of Daigo Gong Ha. For his combat service, he received the Bronze Star and Legion of Merit for combat fees. For the last decade of his working career, he was the treasurer of the Navy Marine Corps Relief Society, a fitting end for a man who lived a life of service. Our father loved to learn and always faithful to his education. He received multiple master's degrees from the Naval Postgraduate School, Georgia Tech, Northwestern, Shamanad University, and he was a CPA. All of this schooling prompted our grandmother to ask our mother, is Fritz really smart or is he really stupid? <laughs> our father was a great dad and he always faithful to his family. Provided all three of his children who lived past childbirth, Kathy, George, and myself, he coached Little League teams, organized church youth groups, started up Boy Scout troops. In the end, he did the best he could to be a loving father and husband. He and our mother were married for 57 years, starting in 1957, and he stayed by her side until she succumbed to Alzheimer's. He was devoted to his second wife, Jackie, and her family as well. He lived his marriage both, and that what God has joined to get together, let no man put us under. Our father was always faithful to his fellow man, and he treated everyone as if they were part of his extended family. 
often providing emotional and financial support to others. He was generous to a fault. He was famous for saying about his wealth, I'm not going to take any of it to my grave. And he was true to his word. He donated all of his savings to various individuals in the Omicenary institutions, including St. Michael's. He was the Director of Administrative Services, Shanghai University of Honolulu, and the Treasurer of the Christ Child Society. But our father was not always financially secure, and he confessed that as an altar boy at St. Paul's in Jacksonville, Florida, during the Great Depression, that he once took money from the collection to buy some belly donuts. <laughs> Despite spending time in the seminary in Baltimore, he was not a saint. He taught my brother George and I how to play golf in Indonesia by taking us to a nine-hole golf course every Friday. This resulted in us being late for school. Nevertheless, Dad would write us a note that said, please excuse, excuse George and Joe as they were involved in a family activity. We were never questioned by the school administrators. We were certain that they were afraid to ask as they assumed we were in family counseling sessions. <laughs> Our father loved to sing. He was always faithful to various singing groups in which he was a member. All of us remember him singing various Depression era folk songs and various bugle calls including waking us up to Reveille. Finally, our father was always faithful to his country, his Catholic faith. He stood for the flag and knelt for the cross. It was purely superfluous.